Okay. Let's um, basically, this, this is a good example of a home um, circuit. Basically, you have your L1, which comes all the way from the breaker panel, and, and so does your neutral. It comes undisturbed and lands on each side of the load. Um, your L1 will come, and it's actually broken right here at your switch and runs out to your load. But once you switch it on, that relay clo or that contact closes and allows the power to come out and lights up that light bulb. Does anybody have any questions on how this board here works? So that light bulb represents a resistor? Yes, it, it represents a resistor. It, it's pulling power. Um, and this board right here, it's actually, this, it's basically wired up the same as this one. L1 coming from the breaker and same for your uh, neutral. This is actually a parallel circuit. So um, you can actually unscrew a light bulb and if if uh, one burns out, then you still have power to all the other ones. Unlike, say, if you had a, uh, a Christmas tree light and one of the lights go out, then the whole string is done for. Um, but you would just keep continuing on your neutral to each side of the load, and the same for your L1. Do you guys have any questions about this board? All right. Now we're going we're gonna to step it up. This is basic. This is just basic AC electrical, what we've done so far. Now we're going to take that basic AC electrical and just like my lesson plan a little while ago, we are going to show you how the ladder diagram works for heating and air. And we are going to use these light bulbs, this, this one for heat, this one for the condenser, and this one for the indoor fan motor as an example of how and when they get powered up from the thermostat. So. One of the things that, that we have to work with in a safe way is the thermostat, as you remember. And the way we power a furnace up is we will take power from, most furnaces are 120 volts, some of them are 208 to 220, but we are gonna break power to the furnace with, with a switch. And a lot of times on a ladder diagram like this, we're gonna call that S1. Um, after, when we power this on, like the position it is right now, we actually take the, the L1 or L2 hot and we'll land it on a terminal strip like this and we'll take neutral and we will, we will continue the neutral all the way to one side of any resistor or any load, including the primary side of the transformer, if you remember from, from class. And we want to power up the transformer so we can make 24 volts right off the bat. And so we're going to have neutral and 120 hot on the primary side. And on the secondary side, you can see where the red wire and the green wire are coming out. The red for 24 volt hot are, and the green one is the uh, 24 volt common. And what we did on this is, and this is a good example of how a furnace will look, we'll have a terminal strip. And so from the terminal strip, we will take R and common into the thermostat and land them on R and C in the thermostat. So we're going to feed the thermostat with 24 volts. Now anytime the thermostat wants to call, anytime the thermostat calls for the fan, for example, we want, this is, if this is the indoor fan motor, we want the contacts in close, inside that relay to close. And to do that, we need to send 24 volts to the coil. If everybody remembers how the, the contactors and relays were, we want to send 24 volts, and we always use G for the indoor fan motor. So when I, when I turned the indoor fan motor on on the thermostat, all we did is we sent that 24 volts out that was sitting on R through G, as he's showing you right here. If, when I turn that switch to, on G, we send that 24 volts to the relay coil right there and powered it up. As soon as, as soon as that relay powered up, we closed the contact inside here, taking this 120 volts that was just looking for a party and we sent it out to the, to the fan motor. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that at all? Nobody? Is that, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Pretty nice. This is a great way that we can just leave the house
for a week and not worry about anything. That thermostat's gonna have total control. And you set that thermostat wherever you need it. If I actually raised, if I put, if I put that thermostat back in auto and I wanted cooling, I'm gonna just set the fans or the cooling off heat switch to cool. And immediately I called for cooling. When I did, we sent 24 volts out on G and that started the indoor fan motor. And the thermostat also sent 24 volts out on Y. And if you remember, Y is what starts the condenser outside. And so here comes Y to the coil. When the coil pulled in, it took, it took that high voltage that was sitting there waiting for somewhere to go out to the condenser. And that, that starts the compressor and the condenser fan motor outside. And so basically, just like Robert showed you, we closed C1, started the fan motor, and C2, and started the condenser. All right, anybody have any questions about that? Just like I showed you in the classroom, that our power was sitting right here, and when we put it in cool, it came across out Y and pulled the contactor in, and then it also followed the switch that was in the automatic position inside to the furnace, Pull the relay in and start the fan motor and the blower in your house starts running. Okay, yes sir? Uh, what happens if you change it off of auto? If I take it off of auto and back to cool, or back into on, it's still gonna remain running. It's just that it'll never shut off now when, the, when, the, uh, when we don't have the call. That's a, that's a great question. Let me go ahead and drop the room temperature call set point lower than it is right now. It looks like it's 78 degrees in here. So I'm just gonna lower the temperature until we don't want cooling anymore. Okay, now I'm not calling for cooling, but the indoor fan motor continues to run. And the only reason is, is because we were in the on position. So I'm gonna go back to auto and it goes closed. Until it's ready. Until it's ready. Now, let's raise the temperature, or I mean, Sorry, let's, let's drop the temperature and call for cooling again. It's on 85, 84, 80, 80. Now it's right at the room temperature, 79. I'm gonna go down to 78. Immediately, as soon as we hit 78, we sent 24 volts out on G and started the indoor fan motor and Y and started that condenser. Got it? Any, any other questions? That's pretty simple, really. I mean, it's when you start understanding how that contact inside that relay closes, and I think that the drawing that we had on the last slide in the classroom helps a lot. All right, now let's just go ahead and raise the temperature again in the, in the room so that we're not calling for it. And now, since the fan is in the auto position, it should go off, so, that, so the condenser and the fan go off. And really, that is the preferred way to cool your house. Because if that fan continues to run, it's actually going to start picking up heat and circulating that warm air. And it's going to warm your rooms up quicker than they, they were if that fan shut off as soon as we got satisfied. Does that make sense? All right. Now, um, there's only one thing that we haven't talked about, and that is heat. This this modern thermostat right here actually has the ability to turn the, to turn the indoor fan motor on when we call for heat. Um, the problem is, is it turns that indoor fan motor on a little bit too soon. So if, if, that, fan, if that fan motor comes on before that, those heat strips are warm, it's gonna be an awful cold blowing air. And I found out that there is an option inside that thermostat with a pot switch that you can change that um, and then allow that indoor fan motor to start on its own. So let's put it in heat. Let's see, I'm going to turn the thermostat down and not call for heat at first. I've got it in the heat and the auto position. When I start it, you sh we should see the indoor fan motor come on and the heat strips come on. And what we're gonna do is our power is gonna go through the thermistor inside out W, and W is, gonna, is going to power up 
the coil in this relay. This relay is called a sequencer. If we have heat strips and there's more than one, we'll have several of these, these relays called sequencers. And the reason is, is because if you've ever been in a house when the heat strip started, if they have electric heat, the lights might, might go dim because it's pulling so much load. And if the house is any more than 1,500 square feet, you're probably gonna have more than one set of heat strips. And as they come on, we want them to come on at different times so that we don't blow the, the uh, breaker at the very beginning. So you'll notice when I turn this on that it takes a little while for the heat to come on because of this time delay in that sequencer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and raise the temperature. It's 79 degrees in here and it's way too cold, so I'm gonna raise the temperature. All right, there goes the indoor fan motor, starts to blow. And in just a minute, we'll, we'll, that relay will pull in and start the heat. See there? And so if there's three sets of heat strips, they're all going to start at different times. So we never have a big rush of power, okay? And if this was a gas valve on a gas furnace, we probably won't use a sequencer. We'll just use a little relay like this because as soon as we call for heat on W from the thermostat, we can just go ahead and start, that, start the gas operation. We're gonna hit pilot, we're gonna turn the gas valve on, we're gonna see flames, and in a short while, then we'll, we'll go ahead and heat up it to the point to where we can start the, the fan. So here we go one more time on heat. We had power sitting right there. We set, it on, we set the thermostat on heat. We send the 24 volt signal out W, which powered up the coil on here and took the high voltage when, it, when the contact inside closed and sent it out to the heat source. And it also turned the indoor fan motor on right here. So we close this contact and we close that contact for heat. Anybody have any questions? Because this is, this is it. This little, this little control panel right here is, if you understand this control panel, I'm telling you, you can fix just about anything in the electrical, AC electrical world. Uh, because if you understand relays and transformers and thermostats, um, you've got it. You can fix a lot of things already. And I know you've, all my juniors have only been in the class for about <coughs> one month now. Um, but by Christmas time, this is, gonna, this is gonna just seem like second nature to you, including reading a, a ladder diagram. Okay, no questions from anybody? None whatsoever? You really get it? Everybody gets it? Good deal. All right. Sounds good.